everyone welcome back to another video and welcome back to the continuation of the complete devops bootcamp we've already covered complete networking course and uh, getting started with like uh, linux and uh, you know terminal commands and in this video we are going to be looking at something that is very important and that is something that we are going to be working with in the entire course so you can say that this is a this is an important video and what we learn in this particular video is going to be used I repeat, it's going to be used in the entire bootcamp. When we learn about Docker, this is going to be used extensively. When we learn about Kubernetes, various tools, cloud computing, like cloud providers and things like that, this thing is going to be used everywhere. Sort of like, you know, the ABCDs of DevOps, if you will. What is it that we're learning? YAML files. How to work with YAML files. So in this course, we are going, this is an important section. So let me tell you first what we are going to cover in this course and then you can decide like you know how you want to proceed it please watch this video entirely if you want to get a good understanding of yaml files in the end uh, i have actually put like i'll put timestamps, and you can directly jump or uh, jump at that point as well so around the end i will also share with you some tools that can help you out when working with yaml files this is an important point because uh, there are tools with that let you work with like yaml files without actually writing yaml code right and uh, the links for all those tools can be found in the description. If you want to learn about these tools, then I'll cover that in the end of the video. So, in this video, what are we covering? We are covering, let's say this is a YAML course. Okay, if you don't know anything about YAML, you don't know what it is, why we use it, don't worry. This is course is for complete beginners, no prerequisites required, obviously. So, we are going to cover like an introduction. To yaml files like what are yaml files and like how do we work with it what are the benefits of it compare it with other files like json you may you may have heard about json files xml files if you have not heard about that don't worry we will compare yaml files with json files and xml files these are files okay like your text like you have text files if you've done my java bootcamp we have a dot java file similarly we have yaml files we'll tell you like i'll tell you what this is all about and everything Okay, we'll cover, we're going to cover like the syntax of it and everything. Okay, so we're going to cover the syntax. We're going to cover like uh, properties and like data types. Properties. Data types. And YAML tools. So, for example, we'll be covering uh, a few YAML tools. And the links are in the description and I'll share this when we start with the uh, like at the end of the bootcamp so uh, at the end of this video itself okay let's let's get started okay so yaml first of all what is the full form previously it was known as yet another markup language but now it's called yaml ain't markup language okay i'll tell you the reason for that as well now in my videos i try to go into the details of everything because i assume that not many folks may know everything okay some folks may not know what is a markup language that may be possible you may have heard about one markup language everyone has heard about html hypertext markup language now i ask you a question what is a markup language you know what a programming language is if you don't know then watch my introduction to programming video of the dsa bootcamp what is a markup language if we talk about html okay forget what the markup language what does html do what is the use of html can anyone tell me like pause this video think about it don't google think about it what is the use of html okay now that you have paused and now resumed the video, you may have thought that, okay, HTML is used to, you know, put some data on the web page, put our links and forms over there. That's correct. Yeah, you put links and forms and, you know, text and all these headings and everything. Okay. Is HTML used to like uh, style your particular web page? No, we use CSS for that. Cascading style sheets, right? And what is the use of HTML then? What is it doing? It's providing child parent relationship. First header will come. Inside the header, we're going to have lists. Inside the list, we are going to have bullet points. Inside the bullet points, we're going to have paragraph. So this, that, sometimes we have paragraph outside. So we have like a page like this. Okay. Inside that, we have a table over here. Then we have a list over here. Then we have some bullet points over here. So this relationship, what goes inside, what, how they are layered. This is the use of like markup language. Okay. Cool. Now you're like, Kunal, then why was the YAML name changed to YAML ain't markup language? Ain't means like it's not. So YAML now stands for 
basically it stands for yaml ain't markup language so recursive <laughs> you don't know what recursion is check out my recursion playlist okay so the idea is that uh, let's talk about the, the 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 yaml stuff now like basically like what is it and what it's doing it's not a programming language it is basically a data format data format okay used to exchange data used to exchange data if you have heard now this is the point for someone who has heard about it if you have not heard about this ignore what i'm saying it is similar to similar to xml and json data types okay if you don't know about these two things wait till the end of the video i will cover this also if you know about it then you know what i mean okay so we use it to like store data and stuff and we'll talk more about its features and syntax and all these things later on okay so it's basically a, a simple human readable language that can be used to represent data okay it is used to store some information about some uh, configurations for example okay cool here one more point i would like to make is in yaml you can store only data what type of data i'll tell you later on and not commands so in other programming languages you can add commands and everything right if this do that you can do that in yaml you can't do it you can't add commands you can only store data okay this thing is known as storing of data in like files okay in json you store data in uh, xml you store data it is known as data serialization i'll give you an example we'll code this as well don't worry and i'll give you you may have an you may have a doubt right now kunal we know you're saying it stores data but what type of data where is this data coming from how does it look like how do we store it how do we read it we'll cover that in a hands on demo first let me explain to you what it is not how it is focus on what it does then we'll focus on how it does it like we do in every lecture okay data serialization let's learn about that okay so let's think about it let's say you have a data object see the thing is if you don't know about what objects are in memory please watch the introduction to programming video first if you don't know introduction to programming basic how computer work and you're learning about devops that will not work okay at least watch the introduction to programming video okay cool objects we have covered that in over there okay so let's talk about objects you know data objects uh, your you may have something like an object of uh, if you watch the object in programming playlist you may understand but object is nothing but a collection of like data okay so for example in your memory you have stored objects like related to let's say uh, an object of a particular student okay uh, and that has some sort of a memory some sort of a data type like roll number name and marks something like that okay now the idea is that you want to store this information about this student let's say you want to share it in a in an android app and then you want to share this application inside a web app then you want to share this inf information inside a, a, a something like a, you know a, a machine learning model for example so you have your android app mobile app or whatever you're giving the student object is available you want to share this object with like your web app you want to share that object with your machine learning app or whatever right so the idea is that there needs to be some sort of a way to have a particular data that you want to share in just one single format that can be shared everywhere the data that is stored in android operating systems might be different than you know your your uh, your websites okay it might be different than your machine learning models now well, how do i if i want to share the data stored in android i might need to convert it or whatever and show it into web and then machine learning how will that work kunal so the idea is serialization and deserialization so serialization is basically a process of converting the data objects into a complex data structure 
into a stream of byte okay data object basically convert the data object that is present in some complex data structures into a stream of storage that can be used to transfer this data on like your physical devices okay so for example this object you have over here this object simple let's say your yaml file that contains some data okay you create it into a stream what is a stream kunal stream is basically just like a byte stream okay chunks of data for example you store that in your database now your computer okay in this direction this is known as serialization the reverse of this take from one device you want to convert it again back to object back to object this is known as deserialization okay if you are aware about json data so you know in, in when you get from an api call you get a json data you convert that into your json objects or whatever that's the similar thing over happening over here okay cool so this particular you know serialization means that uh, you have your uh, let's see okay so in simple language you may have some object okay in your memory some object so you have your object let's say okay you put it into like serialization let's say you do some serialization serialization put it into a serializer for example okay it converts it into a stream of bytes stream of bytes okay just memory and now you can store it in your let's say yaml file let's say your uh, database okay let's say your uh, something like your memory for example so that's basically about it i hope this makes it clear this is serialization okay so a refresher of an object an object is basically like uh, what object is combination of code plus data this is something that is like device you know on various devices like your, your object like in your memory and ram or whatever okay if you want to learn more about objects what objects are check out the object oriented programming playlist but it's basically a data storage unit okay so now you want to store this particular object you want to read what is inside the object or whatever in a human readable form or you want to transfer this object into various other domains you want to transfer one object to another objects or whatever okay you want to transfer it in a database in a memory in a file so you pass it into a serializer and it converts it into a stream of byte byte you already know memory and then you can save it in your yaml files or whatever so serialization is basically i repeat a process of converting this data object which is a combination of code and data into series of bytes that saves the state of this object in a form that is easily transmittable okay so in this form now this data in the stream form can be transferred over in the yaml file or any other file any other file you want database or memory or whatever the reverse of this will be known as deserialization okay that is basically about it cool so when you work with like things like big data and machine learning and stuff serialization uh, comes into picture i'll show you an example of this as well don't worry but uh, yaml so some of the data serialization languages in or in more simple words if you want to represent this object in a file that you can read and code or modify in those files are known as uh, the data serialization language or files or if you want it to call it okay and the language used in those files is known as data serialization language so a language that can be used to represent this data in the text format for example data serialization languages yaml json and what xml so in this way you can use the these languages to represent data in code as simple as that i can make it 
okay so you can store data in the format of code and then you can use that file to convert it into an object that is known as deserialization object to file file to object object to file serialization file to object deserialization okay i know there are some students who may or not even know what an object is so that's why i'm smiling okay <clears throat> covered an entire object in programming playlist introduction to programming and everything make sure you check it out okay so that is data serialization and that is about yaml so yaml is a data serialization language it's not a programming language we can store like some information in it and data in it and it means yaml ain't markup language so on and so forth but kunal you mentioned it was first known as yet another markup language why are they saying now that it's not another markup language because markup languages are used to store what what are they used to store documents html stores documents right in yaml you can also store objects sorry data not just documents but objects data as well that is why it's known as yaml in markup language okay so a good pointer for you over there cool let's move forward okay so i hope you know what data serialization and deserialization is now okay so you have one object that is on some computer you want to transfer it into let's say another application so format may be different kunal how do we make sure that this uh, you know format is maintained and we can wouldn't it be cool to have just one format that i can share everywhere okay convert that object into a yaml file serialization convert that yaml file back into an object deserialization okay so representation of your object like in code that way you can see it in yaml file so it's like used you can store it you know uh, kunal what type of objects will be stored what type of files are stored in yaml files so it's basically used in like configuration files this is why when we you know cube kubernetes configuration files for example so in configuration files when we define see this is an this is a little bit advanced topic but you can understand this okay listen very carefully in kubernetes or other tools or whatever you create various objects okay so for example i made my application and i'm like hey i want to run my application on 10 servers in the cloud uh, and they should run in such a way that only you know at at most five applications are running per server or something like that i want to do that kubernetes is going to be like okay sure i will i will do that for you i have this object it's like a pod i call it a pod it's my wish kubernetes is like i so clearly not kubernetes wish like the community who the people who made kubernetes google um so basically that object you are like okay hey kubernetes you want to create this this object for me uh, okay here's the written type of what this object should look like please take it and create the object so that written type where you will provide it where you will write it in the form of yaml what you you can write it in the form of like uh, other programming languages as well like java python for that we have clients but that is an advanced topic okay we'll cover that later on cool so this is known as like yaml which is a uh, yaml is a markup language that is used to uh, just uh, lost my train of thought yaml is used to store uh, data okay you can store it as a data serialization language okay let's move forward because i believe it will be much more clear when we give an example okay so it's used where configuration files configuration files you know in like docker and like kubernetes etc etc okay it's very important and it's also used where logs okay caches etc if you don't know what a cache is check out the networking video i did cool all right let's move forward let's learn about some of the benefits now what are the benefits of yaml after this we'll also see like a demo okay we'll be writing yaml files and storing some some data on that okay the number one uh, is that it's very easy to read human readable it's actually this is a very easy topic okay nothing confusing it's a very easy topic okay so it's very like simple and easy to read okay it's very simple and easy to read um it has a nice syntax it has a strict 
syntax like you cannot make like mistakes like that okay so indentation is important for example okay here indentation like like in python indentation is important indentation is important okay the next one is it's easily like convertible to for example json xml so for example you take input in the form of yaml you output it in the form of json can be done very simple okay uh, some of the other like most programming languages use it most languages use yaml okay so it's very very popular that's also another another uh, another good use case right another good benefit okay it is more powerful when representing complex data more powerful when representing complex data okay very simple stuff and um, it's also like uh, you you can also um, use various uh, you know uh, tools with it okay like parsers and etc parsers etc various tools available okay i will actually share with you a tool in the end where you can work with yaml files without even you know directly working with them okay so in kubernetes there is this tool called lens ide check out the links in the description or the end of the video i'll also do a dedicated video on this so when we learn about kubernetes at first we will work heavily with yaml files you'll be like now this is very like uh, writing yaml files again and again it's like really you know boring to me now okay then comes into picture kh lens ide over there you have a graphical user interface and you can just click and you know it does all these things automatically for you show a little bit of a demo at the end so make sure you hang around and if you want to try it out right now the the links are in the description uh, for all the tools that i'll be mentioning these tools trust me will make your life very easy i use though i use these daily and it definitely has helped me in my learning process as well right so i can focus on the concepts and stuff and it takes care of the all the writing stuff and everything for me cool okay one last thing is like there are so many parsers available and everything so parsing is also easy parsing basically means just reading the data okay parsing is easy cool um that's pretty much about it and uh you know yaml ain't markup language and it's used to you know store data and stuff and uh it's used to it's just, you know, similar to like xml json if you don't know what xml or json are we'll cover those later on basically in simple terms yaml is just a way to represent data you can use that to convert it into objects and stuff okay okay let's put everything into picture and see a live demo okay let's see how it looks like how do we store it let's see that now okay i have vs code open over here and uh, we're going to work with uh, some basic uh, you know stuff so use the syntax and like everything i mentioned in the beginning some tools i'll share with you syntax and some of the data types and uh, how it compares with uh, json and xml when i have told you that uh, you are going to be using yaml extensively in the course then don't worry yaml is not going to leave you you will get plenty of opportunities to work with yaml this is nothing main thing is kubernetes okay that is the main thing when we work with devops infrastructures and like infrastructure as code and like pipelines and uh, cloud providers and working cloud computing and things like that so that's the main thing this is the starting of devops bootcamp okay this is nothing this is just the tools that we are learning right now okay let's move forward <clears throat> i have a simple vs code open you can use whatever you want create a new file simple extension of yaml files is dot yaml or dot yml both are fine okay so i can say hello dot yaml this is my yaml file let me just increase the font a little bit hope you can see that cool okay so let's talk about it you may have heard about like dictionaries or hash maps and stuff similarly in yamls also we have we can store uh, such data types we can store like key value pairs okay that's the type number one that we can save so we can have something like uh, let's say apple is a key and it has a value of what 
I am a red fruit. That's it. Or you can add something like one. This is Kunal's roll number or something. This is the key. This is the value. That's it. If you want to see how it's represented, uh, you, can, uh, you can check that out as well. So over here, you can see that uh, when we talk about key value pairs, okay, so you have uh, a key over here is going to be having pointing to some value like this. Okay, this particular thing is not stored in like in hash maps and stuff, you know, it's stored like in your uh, in hash maps and stuff, you know, it's stored like in the memory, but this is over here just a textual representation. You can use this file and convert a hash map out of it. In that case, this will be the key, this will be the value. You can convert a JSON object out of it, pass it into your uh, web development or projects or whatever. Okay, so it's a key value pair. What are some other pairs we have? We have lists. Okay, so we have lists, something like this. If I add some comments over here, lists, so I can add lists. Something like apple, mango, banana. That's it. This is how you represent lists using the dash. Okay. One more thing I would like to mention is uh, YAML is case sensitive. Okay. So apple and apple, these are two different things. Okay. So that's a pointer that I'd like to make that YAML is case sensitive. All right. Okay, one more thing I want to mention is that uh, if you're using uh, in YAML files, so if you want to, you know, mention some uh, some more complex uh, like data types, for example. So in that way, we can do it something like this. Let's say, let's say you add something like this. This is known as your um, block style. Okay, so in the block style, if you have to add something like this, you say something like uh, cities. Okay. Cities. And then you add something like New Delhi. And then you add something like if you're adding a space over here. Okay. And then you add something like, hey, uh, new, not new, uh, something like Mumbai, right? Something like Gujarat or something. So now what is happening? Here you can see something, I, I, I tell you more about the syntax later on. But here basically what is happening, these are like indented by spaces. If I do something like this, it may give me an error. Okay, and you can check this as well. You can use YAML parsers to check this. Let me show you. Okay, so you can go to yamllint.com. I, I push this over here, go. Okay, so here it's saying that uh, it's added it as one single line. Okay, instead I wanted something like this. something like this. If I put it something like this and I say go, you can say it's error. Okay, you are not matching with the block. So basically, spaces are extremely important in YAML. You can't use like tabs, tabs are not using over here, You're using spaces. As I mentioned previously, there are like a lot of tools that we'll be, uh, we'll be using and I'll be mentioning those in the end. Okay, so that was another nice, uh, nice little pointer for you that uh, in YAML we use spaces and indentation is extremely important like it is in Python. Okay, but now you may be like Kunal, this is some different document, this is some different document, this is some different document Kunal. How do you tell basically YAML file that these are different, different documents? So in Kubernetes, you are let's say creating some object of type A, let's say you are creating a pod, you're creating some replicas, you're creating some deployments, ingress or whatever. Okay, don't worry if you don't know about all these things. Let's say you're creating different, different objects. Or you have a simple YAML file that contains various objects of, let's say, uh, it contains an object representation of, first one this contains is of, let's say, apple and fruit. Second one it consists is a list. Third one it consists is a city. So in our YAML file, it's going to be like, what is the data type? It's just like this. Is it a list or is it like your, this uh, block? What is it? So we can actually, we know that these are three different types of documents and we can write those as dash dash dash. Now YAML will know that these are three different types of documents. 
ओके सो यामल बेसिकली इज अ कलेक्शन ऑफ जीरो एंड मोर डॉक्यूमेंट्स इन दिस आई हैव थ्री डॉक्यूमेंट्स दैट आर सेपरेटेड बाय डैश 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 ओके यू कैन आल्सो हैव लाइक जीरो नंबर ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स और व्हाट कूल दैट्स बेसिकली अबाउट इट एंड इफ यू वांट टू एंड द डॉक्यूमेंट यू एंड यू एंड इट विद लाइक इफ यू वांट टू टेल योर यू नो व्हाटएवर वेयर एवर यू विल बी सेंडिंग दिस यामल यू वांट टू टेल देम दैट डॉक्यूमेंट हैज एंडेड डॉट 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 डॉक्यूमेंट फिनिश्ड हियर दैट्स इट हाउ सिंपल इज दिस very simple language okay so now you here after this you will not start a new one you will only work with this so here is a list and here is a normal key value pair what is this kunal this is a block one block style how does it work how does this thing work let's see it's actually pretty simple so we have something like cities and i have a list over here let's say this list contains new delhi mumbai gujarat this is pointing to this that's it as simple as that cool all right so that is uh, basically about it let me show you like json files as well hello.json okay so this is a json file side by side i can put these okay so if you want to convert this into json okay you can find some online tools for that let me show you so if you have a yaml file like this so you want to have your own this block code how would this look into json it will look something like this okay so zooming in a little bit there you go okay so this is basically like um flow style in in uh in like json that you have like this okay you can also have it in yaml okay you can i can also put it in uh, in like yaml stuff so i can put it something like this so something like if i had something over here like this which is what i had in json file so json has like curly braces outside it okay you start with this is json same thing we have over here is for this thing but one more thing i can do is i can do it something like this i can say something like cities basically let's say consist of um this thing new delhi mumbai etc kunal why are you doing this here you know that we got an error for bad indentation so if you want to store this amount of data in a list in just a single line so that you don't rely on indentation you can use this flow type as you can see it's similar to the json data type okay similarly you can do it something like as this as well if you want to have key value pairs you can have something like mango yellow fruit okay you can add something like a yellow fruit age 56 something like that this also works if i just copy paste this and i paste this over here you can see there you go exactly the same as json but in json you see we are actually adding over here a string data type you're not adding like here you can add it as an like as it is okay okay and you know we learned about comments over here so comments are basically something that is ignored by your compilers or interpreters or whatever um in other languages you may have seen like multi line comments in yaml it does not provide us multi line comments okay if you want to comment this entire thing then for multi line comments you have to add these hashes again and again and again okay let's move forward okay now let's talk about data types we all know what data types are um because you've watched the pro introduction to programming video data types are very pretty basic basic stuff every language has some data types so we'll be covering those over here so you may have already heard about like normal data types like primitives and complex data types like arrays for example right hash maps for example let's cover that over here uh data types dot yml you can also write yaml and yml both work 
so that anything that you write after the colon like this okay so for example my name is equal to something like kunal kushwaha if i just write it simple like this kunal kushwaha this this works as well okay so a uh, uh, a variable over here like some like a uh, an a name over here basically any any name you can have like myself for example so any word over here colon space the type so this is known as a variable basically okay here a colon and a single space and anything you write over here will be known as a variable now, variables can be of like various data types so for example we can have a string variable now strings are basically written in uh, either no quotes so this is a string and uh, you can write something like this as well uh, something like root is apple double quotes or you can write something like uh, job is equal to software engineer in single quotes these are strings string variables okay so how many types of uh, how many ways are there to represent strings in yaml three okay sometimes it may be possible that you may add uh, strings that contains various lines for example bio okay so what if i write my bio over here hey my name is kunal kushwaha uh, i am a very nice dude for example Now, this is not actually in two lines this particular thing is one entry and this is another entry if i put it in my parser it's giving error it's like what is this yaml file always contains this thing there should be present always any time you can see any data type you can see over here we have this thing colon something colon something Okay, like randomly you cannot have either it has to be a list or something like this, or if to add something colon that entire thing then. Okay, so this is actually giving me an error. It's like okay, this is not cool. So what if you want to add new lines and preserve all these indentation marks and spaces and everything? You add this over here, a dash. Now this will be stored at a separate line. Okay. Now sometimes it may be possible that you have to write. that is a single line so for example you want to write a single line in multiple lines like when it is passed in the object it is treated as one single line but when i am writing it down i want to write it in multiple lines because uh, because i uh, it's like a, a really long line for example okay so you can say message you can start by with this this character all the new lines now will be into a single line it will look like it's different lines okay this will all be in one single line but when you put it into into some object into some language in some database or whatever it will be treated as one line okay so this is same as <clears throat> same as this cool so you like you know that here you are not providing any data type or like you know whatever or something like that um we are only covering like strings over here what if you say something like number is equal to 5463 5473 this is of what type integer type you can add floats as well you can add marks something like this this is float data type you can add booleans as well okay so boolean are what true or false in yaml false is actually something like a boolean value is something like we write no this is true or false okay so let's cover this as well like uh, we we covered about like integers and stuff but you can also specify the data type okay so yaml right now will automatically de detect what type of data type this is this is float this is storing an integer type this is storing a boolean type okay but 
what we need to do is um, we need to basically let's cover the data types first so let me cover like some uh, you know like uh, values so here we have like our decimal numbers uh, you can also have like your uh, floating point numbers or whatever um, and you have your, uh, your boolean numbers false and stuff and uh, you can have like uh, also I think you can have something like n you can have n and you can also write false or something like this okay you can also write false with capital letters and false with completely like this okay same for true for true you're going to use yes you can use yes you can use yes something like that okay there are some other types of values they are also known as uh, null values which we'll cover like uh, like later on but uh, let me first tell you how you can actually specify the type specify the type so yaml is automatically going to detect it but you can also tell it specifically like you can force it like in a hey i actually want to tell you the data type that i'm using over here so you can specify the type and while we're specifying we'll also look at all the data types okay so first one is let's say we look at uh, for example integers so if you're talking about all the integers you can check out uh, something like uh, you can add a zero so you can say zero is something like this so if you want to specify a type you just do exclamation exclamation write the type over here and then add the value this is a zero okay you want to add a positive number so this is positive number integer something like 45 okay negative number integer negative 45 okay you can also add binary numbers binary number you can add also of type integer um, binary starts with what 0b we've covered this in number system of the data structures bootcamp you can add 1100 something like one something whatever you want okay octal number also type integer starts with what zero something like that hexadecimal zero x something like this okay there's one more which is uh comma values so for example if you want to store something like 500 and 40,000 something like this so you can store it something like this you can say integer you can say plus 540 underscore 000, zero, zero something like that okay so you use this exclamation exclamation uh, thing um, and uh, that's just the symbol and then you specify the data type and then provide the value that's it okay so these are some of the common ones um, next ones are what floating points so let's look at floating point numbers okay so you can add a simple number over here uh, you can add something like or you can say marks float 56.89 cool you can also add infinity infinity of type float let's say this can be dot infinity <clears throat> okay there's one more thing called not a number you can add that as well you can say not a number dot na not a number okay sound good okay and uh, booleans are something we already talked about over here boolean values you can add something like uh, for boolean you can add something like uh, over here you can add boolean boolean now it's directly specifying it's a boolean type okay string as well we have seen string so this can be str that's it that's a string okay. 
Sound good? Okay, there's one sort of data type in other languages we have like null and none. Okay, since we're going to use YAML files in other languages and stuff, we need some sort of a way to represent that also. Okay, so it does not hold like any value as such. You can talk about null over here. So you can say surname or something. You don't have a surname, let's say null, and you can specify it as null, or you can null null or tilde as well tilde works as well sometimes keys may be null this is a null key that's null okay other complex data types are like you know like arrays and stuff we already covered these are arrays representation okay very simple cool so like the block sequence and stuff that we already learned about flow flow statements we already learned about in the previous uh, previous file you can also add dates dates and time can also be added okay so i have to google that dates and time in yaml there you go something like that no this is a php php example you get the yaml example Ah, there we go. Cool. So here we have it. Google is your best best friend. Okay, utilize Google. You want to just mention the date over here. So you can say, copy paste, date. This is the date today, or whatever. Okay. You want to add the time, something. So here you can say, date, and time is this thing. That's it. I believe if no time zone is added over here, it says that it's assuming UTC time zone. Okay, here it says that if no one is added, then it assumes UTC. Cool. And the data type for this is timestamp. You can add it like this. Okay. You can also mention the the time yourself as well. So if you want the Indian time, for example, so I just copy this, okay, and I paste it over here. India time. I add the date over here, okay, something like that, and then I add the time over here. Something like this. Let's see. Okay, so basically, this is the date, and time is something like this. Okay, like this, and I can add UTC five thirty. That's what we have over here in India. That's it. Okay. If you don't want to provide any time zone, copy paste. no time zone needs to be provided okay in that case just remove it cool that is it okay and we're talking about numbers you can also add like uh, exponents okay expo nen shial numbers for example you can say 6.023 E fifty six, Rishwar fifty six. That's it. If you if you work with exponents, you know what this means. I think that's pretty much about the standard data types, and uh, should be enough to you know <laughs> help you. And I think this is it. Yeah. And apart from this, let's now learn about some more advanced data types. Okay. So let's create some advanced data types. Advanced data. Types dot yaml. I created a folder. Properties <laughs> file once data types dot yaml. Think that looks good. All right. Don't need this. Don't need this. So initially we learned about lists. So lists are basically known as if you want to write it down. What do you do? You write down to something like this. No. You write it as a sequence. Okay. So for example. 
here and something like you can say or you can say something like uh, a student has this data a sequence type data okay what does the student have marks name roll number something like that okay okay so the similar thing that we drew over here as you can see on the screen this is actually how it's stored internally this second thing this is what a what we mean by a sequence and as we know that over here we also used this notation to use it so you can write it over here like this also okay like this also cool sometimes it may be possible that uh, some of the um, you know keys of the sequence will be empty this is known as a sparse sequence okay sparse sequence that's something like a how this will contain something like empty okay will contain something let's say null or something okay stop sparse sequence okay some things are empty may be possible you have some some fields that are like uh, like empty sometimes you may want to represent like sub items of a particular list so for that you can basically um, you know do nested sequences as well nested sequence so let's do it over here if we transform it into so if we have something like um, if you have something like mango apple banana right if i add it like this and i add a space over here for example then i add another thing like this and i add a space over here so now you can see we have nested items okay so this is a one one type of item another type of item so you can say marks roll number date didn't want to save that <laughs> i just have it of clicking control s now why so there you go these are nested okay nested sequences just going to write it over here there you go you can use the one dash command to use that okay we already covered maps key value pairs are called maps like hash maps if you will okay for this you use map very simple okay sometimes it may be possible that you're using uh, you know uh, nested mappings map within a map okay so using something like let's say name kunal kushwaha role inside this i will write my roles i'll write age is equal to 78 job is equal to student so you can see this entire thing outside is a map and this inside thing is also a map like sent this is same as like this okay same as this thing you want to represent a map you can do it using a like this like this okay map within a map very simple okay uh, sometimes it may be possible that you may require one key to have multiple values okay these are known as pairs keys may have duplicate values so pairs are used like uh, pairs okay so you can have something like pair example this is of type pair and i will add my examples over here i will say something like um, you know i am for example a student 
and I am also a teacher. I am two in one. <laughs> okay. Cool. So basically, this will be used in the this this hash table will be like it will be stored like how then? Kunal, if I try to access job, how will I get it? This will be a hash table uh, containing arrays. So an array of hash tables. That's how you'll find it. If I try to copy paste this over here somewhere, so you can see it got converted into an array. Job student, job teacher. So job will actually have two pairs over here. Okay, same as same as this something like this i'm adding pairs over here and i can say bracket question sorry a comma like this that's it very simple isn't it good okay opposite of this is like unique values set will allow you to have unique values okay so here there's no key value pair here's only items and items only so you can say for example um, names only unique names we want so I'll convert it into a set okay question mark in this case Kunal Apurv Rahul, I can't have multiple names here. Two Kunals I cannot have. There you go. Names Kunal, Apur, Rahul. Because I did not provide any value, only only like some keys and stuff are provided over here. Okay, sometimes you may want to have like uh, a particular key and the value you want it to be is like the sequence that we learned over here, these sequences. This entire sequence should be represented as a value, for example. In that case, you can use dictionary okay o map okay so for this you can have something like uh, people what is the type dictionary and every single thing so this is a key. The value is going to be a list itself, a sequence itself. Okay. Something like this. Something like uh, Kunal. Okay. And Kunal can have a sequence. So for example, Kunal can have something like name Kunal Kushwaha, age is equal to this, height is equal to something random like this. Another person will have Rahul. Rahul will have a name. Rahul OP, age is equal to 50. Okay, you can add other things over here. You can add something like when height is equal to like this. Okay. So if you want to see a representation of this, let's let's see a representation of this, how it will look like. So I have my people over here. Let me draw it. I have my people over here. This contains two things. Kunal, Rahul, they contain three things. Name, age, height, name. This is how it's stored. Okay, if you wanna visualize it. That's basically about it that you can see. Okay. okay. Now, what I want to do is that reusing some properties, reusing some properties. 
okay so i add something like uh, like uh, person and some information i can add about them i can say name is equal to kunal kushwaha and i can say favorite fruit is equal to something like let's say or remove the name okay let's say just the likings of a person okay likings of a person so let's say favorite fruit is of a person what favorite fruit is let's say mango and uh, let's say rank of a person over here or not rank we can say something like uh, dislikes so dislike of this person is what let's say they don't like uh, grapes or something okay now you're creating a person like this you're creating a person like uh, you're saying kunal okay kunal for example or you're just saying person okay and you're saying name is equal to kunal kushwaha let's say there are five people whose favorite fruit is mango and favorite dislikes dislikes are grapes what are you going to do copy paste you can do copy paste similarly another person one this person number one then you can have person number two then you can have person number three this is getting repetitive okay rahul apur so this code these two lines are getting repetitive if you have to insert a thousand people who have this same property you will write these two lines thousand times so for this we use anchors what do we use we use anchors so basically anchors mean that what is the property you want to use so i'm going to say at the rate base is the command for this this is the property that i want to use all the properties that are available over here and if you want to add the properties you can add the properties over here like this star base so how do we solve this problem we don't have to write this again and again hey can we not just use this thing for this we use something known as using anchors so anchors basically means what do you want to copy and where do you want to copy it what do you want to copy and where do you want to copy it make sense so that is what we're going to be using over here so for example what do we want to copy we want to copy this thing so we will give our anchor a name we're going to say at the rate likes and now i'm just going to not write it over here like this i'm just going to say this this particular symbol over here okay so this basically this symbol basically says that uh, the maps that i'm specifying as the value should be inserted here what am i specifying as a value i'm going to say star which particular anchor likes so here what is going to happen is uh, this entire thing will be let's say you can imagine copy pasted over here okay so that's about that you can also override it so you can also copy paste over here like this you can override some things so let's say you want to override the dislikes of rahul so you can override it you can say dislikes for rahul or let's say dislikes are berries for example so all the ones will be copied as it is favorite fruit mango dislikes grapes and then dislikes will be overridden by berries so this will be like this person 2 will be something like this person 2 will look something like this this will look like first it will have person 2 then it will be like okay copy all the likes okay all the likes i'm going to copy copy all the likes over here copied all the likes dislikes updated okay no problem dislikes updated this is what it will look like okay so these are anchor tags 
Okay, so that was basically about all the types and everything that we wanted to cover. So as you can see, it's only a matter of like let's take a take a take a, let's take a real world example. Okay, so let's say you want to define a particular data of some object of let's say students. Now we can define it. Now I will explain it to you what I mentioned in the first lecture, first introductory, like the starting of the video. I will tell you about how data is stored in XML, JSON, and YAML. You know how it's stored in YAML, but Let's say we're trying to store one simple data type. Let's say we're saying we're storing, let's say, uh, the main data is like, say, there's a school, for example. Okay, there's a school and the school has a particular like, uh, like a name is available for the school. And there's a, there's a, let's say, something like, uh, who is the, who is the principal of the school? Okay, and then you have a list of all the students basically okay every single student so students will have every single like there will be let's say one student over here and let's say that student has a roll number and a name and marks we want to represent this look at it very carefully we have to represent this in the form of your YAML file or XML file or JSON file. This is a data type. This is a data and we have to store it in the form of a code. How can we use that? You know, the serialization and deserialization thing we talked about. So that is what we're going to be doing over here. Serialization. Let's see how we can do that. So if I create a file over here, I call XML. So XML stands for extensible markup language. Okay. It's also used to store like, uh, you know, like data and can be used to share data across various platforms or whatever. So it's used like at, at various, uh, in, in various, various systems and like backend systems and stuff, it's used. So I can just say, what can I say? I can say school.xml. Okay. Now XML basically has a version. It's basically not readable by humans. That's why we prefer like YAML at very places because here this is not readable by humans. For big, big XML files, it will not be readable by humans. Okay. So we have to provide like some versions over here. Uh, here we have to provide like the version and the uh, encoding of the character, right? The character encoding. So what can we do is we can provide what is the version of XML we are using. So we can say XML version is equal to let's say 1.0. And we have the encoding equal to UTF-8. I have told you about UTF-8 so many times in previous videos. Okay, please check out that. Now, when we're talking about this thing, first thing is the school. No problem. First thing we have over here is school. We're going to end it with school. Sound good? That's the first thing. Now, the idea is that basically we're going to have, uh, what are we going to have inside the school? Inside the school, we're going to have something like uh, the name of the school. For example, I can just write the name over here. Uh, the name of the school is what? You can say name is equal to something like uh, DPS. Okay. And principal is equal to someone. <laughs> okay. And uh, that's it. After this, let's see the diagram. Every school is going to have like a student as well. So this basically means it's inside it, inside this tag. Inside this tag, we also have like what? Students. So I can say that there's a list of students. For example, I'm going to end it with the end tag. So you have to end everything that you have over here. Okay, we can have one student over here. Okay, we can have one student over here. I will have to close it like this as well. I forgot to add the closing mark. Okay. Um, so one more student we need over here. And uh, how do we add a student? What What is inside a student? Roll number, name and marks. So I'm going to say 
रोल नंबर रोल नंबर नेम एंड मार्क्स नेम मार्क्स मार्क्स रोल नंबर इज लेट से ट्वेंटी थ्री नेम इज कुणाल कुशवाहा मार्क्स आर लेट से समथिंग लाइक नाइनटी फोर समू रिप्रेजेंटेड इन एग्जाम फॉर्म वेरी सिंपल ओके सो दिस इज नॉट लाइक रियली ह्यूमन रीडेबल और वॉट एवर बट पीपल यू नो मेनी मेनी कंपनीज टू यूज टू यूज दैट ओके एंड द नेक्स्ट वर्जन वी कैन लुक इन टू इज वॉट जेसन सो जेसन इज प्रिटी पॉपुलर जेसन इज स्टैंड फॉर जावा स्क्रिप्ट ऑब्जेक्ट नोटेशन हैविली यूज इन जावा स्क्रिप्ट एंड वन ऑफ द मोस्ट पॉपुलर यू नो लाइक सीरियलाइजेशन लाइक फॉर्मैट्स दैट पीपल यूज सो देर आर लाइक डेटा टाइप्स लाइक जेसन डेटा टाइप्स दीज आर ऑब्जेक्ट्स ओके इन मॉन्गो डी बी एंड स्टफ एज वेल वी यूज लाइक जेसन ऑब्जेक्ट्स ओवर देर एज वेल सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू राइट दिस इन अ कोड फॉर्मैट यू कैन यूज जेसन फॉर दैट ओके क्रिएट स्कूल डॉट जेसन ओके सो हेयर बेसिकली यू कैन ऑल्सो यूर ऑनलाइन ऑनलाइन यू नो कम्पलीशन टूल्स लाइक कन्वर्जन टूल्स बट नो माइंड सो इट स्टार्ट विथ कर्ली ब्रेसिस एंड एवरी थिंग गर्ज इन साइड कर्ली ब्रेसिस सो हेयर आई एम गोन हैव माई स्कूल ओके एंड स्कूल इज गोन हैव अ फ्यू प्रॉपर्टीज ऑल दीज थ्री प्रॉपर्टीज विल गो इन साइड दिस लिस्ट एर ए सॉर्ट ऑफ अ थिंग ओके फर्स्ट प्रॉपर्टी इज वॉट नेम ऑफ द स्कूल नेम ऑफ द स्कूल इज लेट से डी पी एस कॉमा सेकेंड प्रॉपर्टी ओके सो ना द सेकेंड प्रॉपर्टी इज बेसिकली लेट से समथिंग लाइक प्रिंसिपल ओके एंड द प्रिंसिपल इज लेट से समवन आह एवरीथिंग हैज टू बी इट हैज टू बी लाइक दिस एंटायर थिंग इज ऑल्सो सेट ऑफ प्रॉपर्टीज सो दिस विल ऑल्सो गो इन साइड your curly brace like that that looks good okay so we have school it has this thing that will go inside a curly brace um so we have one school over here that has name dps uh principal is someone and uh, then we have uh, what do we have we have students so we have students can be multiple so array list and now a single student you want to add another student you can add like this another student okay so this is the represent difference between square brackets and curly braces this represent a collection this represents one entity you want to add another school you can add it like this okay so that's about it and here i can add what roll number name and marks so i can say student number 1 so have roll number 12 name you can see this is giving error <laughs> you have to add some data types like this kunal kushwaha okay and uh, marks obviously has to be over here like this you are adding marks as 67 okay can you do something like this no it's giving me error okay you cannot add numbers as a key over here strings are added okay so this is how you write in xml this is how you write in json this is much more human readable <laughs> right so that makes uh, makes much more sense okay Let's try YAML now. YAML is pretty simple. I'm going to copy paste this, and I'm going to convert it. I can use this JSON to YAML tool. That's it. I can just paste it over here. That's YAML file. Okay. School, school, entry number one. Entire school, students, entry number one, first student. Here entries were defined by this thing. Every single entry will be this. This is a collection of entries. This represents the array. This represents curly brace represents one entity. 
you want to add another school you can add another curly brace stuff like this okay over here and over here so yaml is pretty much the cleanest over here okay that is it and now let me just share with you you already know about all these linters and stuff like you can write down you can google like uh, you know for example you make some changes in your uh, in your yaml file something like this okay these things will give error and stuff and when we work with like kubernetes so this is an important part please listen carefully so when you will when we will work like with uh, kubernetes and big big large large files you have to make sure that your um, that your uh, files are basically yaml files are validated and stuff okay so let me tell you since this is the devops bootcamp i'm going to share with you some amazing devops tools that are going to help you when working with or without like yaml files and even like remotely working with it okay let's check it out okay and if you want to like check whether your yaml files are correct or not this is a great blog uh, on uh, you know uh, how to validate your uh, your yaml files and uh, do check it out and i'll leave the link to it in the in the description below you can use the you know data for that and here's everything is basically mention how you can work with schemas and everything okay highly encourage you to check it out and uh, you know to give it a clap and a comment uh, as well if you enjoy reading it i leave the link to it in the description it can uh, you know definitely help you so just sharing some nice resources so uh, make sure you check out the links in the description okay so the first tool is a uh, day tree so for your it validates your kubernetes like uh, configuration files and th those are also in yaml only and it also validates your yaml files okay to see if the structure of your yaml file is right or not okay so you can go to the getting started guide basically i have also created an entire tutorial on this so day tree 1 day tree 2 and day tree 3 you will make it will make much more like if you if you are beginner then you will able to will be able to understand it much more clearly uh, when we cover kubernetes for examples for now you can use day tree to validate your yaml files so what i want you to do right now is go to the link in the description okay and once you sign up and log in using github the second thing i want you to do is watch this video okay even if you don't like just watch this video and uh, you it will be able to like it will be clear to you how you can use dtree and run the yaml validation checks and whatever and it also helps you in like kubernetes schema checks and everything so this is going to be extremely handy when we work with kubernetes in practice okay so get a hang of it right now there are like no prerequisites you can just install it right now and uh, if you want to get started check out this video i've explained it in detail how you can get started check out the link in the description sign up watch this video and you'll be able to check your yaml files like that it's very easy very simple okay just one one line of commands the second one is uh, when you work with kubernetes yaml files they are extremely like you know big and stuff and complex so you can check out monocle by cube shop okay so if you check out monocle by cube shop so all these yaml files and everything you see over here right dot yaml dot yaml okay so these yaml files it makes it easy for you to see in the navigation format okay so it basically makes us easier makes it easier for us to work with these large scale yaml files the kubernetes manifest files okay so it will help you in managing your kubernetes manifest or your in other words kubernetes yaml files for example do give them a shout out as well and you can check out their uh, twitter account they do some amazing work and uh, do check out their like github projects and there's monocle there's cusk and there's test cube as well but step by step we'll be learning a lot of other things i'll be doing a tutorial on this as well so make sure you like share and subscribe this is amazing lens so in kubernetes as i mentioned if you want to try out something you want to create new pods or any any new objects you have to write big big yaml files and deploy those okay we'll learn about that in the devops bootcamp in the future lens on the other hand what does is it does all these things for us using an application a graphical user interface let me show you there you go so you want to create any pods or something okay you want to let's say you want to check out this pod you want to uh, you know create another another resource let's say i want to create another deployment tada it created the yaml file for me automatically if you were not using lens and you wanted to create a deployment or something you had to write this on your own obviously we will learn how to write this on our own but when you are practicing and when you are working in production and stuff to save time tools like lens are amazing world's most advanced kubernetes platform you can download it right now and check it out i'll be sharing a demo on this as well the links are in the description and um, basically you are working with kubernetes without working with yaml files <laughs> so it's more developer focused and stuff and you can check out all the 
information about your cluster or CPU and memory usage and everything. I'll do, do, do a dedicated video on this later on, but uh, make sure you, you know, take a part in the learning in public initiative. Uh, you can check out Kate's lens on, uh, on Twitter as, uh, as well. And uh, you can give them a shout out if you're using their project. And uh, what I recommend you to do is that uh, you can take a screenshot over here. Okay, and you can share that you learned about YAML files. And uh, you can tag, uh, you know, Lens and uh, Cube Shop and Detree on Twitter and share your views. And uh, I've, I've recently started my blog. You can check out in the description. I would encourage you to do as well because it's a great way to learn in public and uh, documenting your learnings. It's, uh, it's amazing. So make sure you check out these platforms. Please check out these tools. All these three you'll find in the description. Extremely easy to get started with. But if you're a beginner, don't worry. I'll be doing a tutorial on those as well. And not just these tools, a lot more tools in Cloud Native will be coming up. Because if you check out the CNCF landscape, we're doing the DevOps Bootcamp, right? CNCF landscape is huge. So many projects are available. So I'm trying to think how to make it easier for everyone to understand. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll get there, we'll make it. And uh, now you just practice. And in the next video, we'll be learning about Docker and Kubernetes and stuff. So make sure you subscribe and uh, press the like button, take a screenshot share it and tag all the amazing tools and stuff and we'll see you in the next one join the learning public initiative hashtag devos with kunal take care bye bye like share and subscribe and comment commenting is important so see you around